Exodus 33, 15. 15. I'll give you guys a little 33, chapter 33, verse 15. And just to give you guys a little context, this is after the people are brought out of Egypt. This is after the Ten Commandments were made. And right now, God isn't very happy with his people, and he calls them actually stubborn. He is actually pretty angry with them. So let's pick up from verse 15. Then Moses said, if you don't personally go with us, don't make us leave this place. How will anyone know that you look favorably on me, on me and your people, if you don't go with us? For your presence among us sets your people and me apart from all other people on this earth. Stop there. See, Moses was wise. He knew not to go anywhere without the presence of God. Not to take one step forward, not to take one step back, sideways, doesn't matter. He knew to wait for the presence of God. And he says that we're not going anywhere until you tell us to. Now just keep that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to this. But now I want to jump all the way to Ephesians. All the way to Ephesians. Ephesians 3. Just keep that in the back of your mind. We'll come back to it. You guys there? Yes. Right, get a little more people. 314, 314. It says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious, unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will go down in God's love and keep you strong. See, now Apostle Paul writes that he prays that we have strength in his spirit. So then Christ can make his home in us and we can trust in him. Now, is there any similarities between these two that I read in uh, Exodus and in here, right? It has something to do with trusting in God's presence, waiting in God's presence. See, though... The course, like over a thousand years, Exodus, when I read Moses, that was thousands of years before when Apostle Paul said this. But somehow that same principle held on. Somehow it stayed. To trust in God, to seek first the presence of God, to seek the strength of the Spirit first in us. He pleaded with God for us to know, to understand the inner strength. Somehow that principle stuck around. And what kind of hit me was during one of my small groups, we, well, well, I gave the guys to read the verses that we're supposed to read. We read the verses and then we discuss them. And one of the guys didn't want to read Exodus because he's like, ah, that's, that's the Old Testament. That's, that's not for me. I only live by the New Testament. And I was like, oh, okay. You know, I told him, I was like, read it again. He's like, nah, that's not for me. That's the Old Testament. And when I was reading, my biggest revelation came from the Old Testament. So I just want to remind you guys that the Old Testament has wisdom in it, Amen. has revelation in it, right. and it is important to us. Amen. Though some things have changed, there is still great revelation to come from the Old Testament. And we can see here that though 2,000, 3,000 years past, the same principle lives on. See, Ecclesiastes 1.9 says, what has been will be again, what has been will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. There is nothing new. Everything repeats itself. Yeah. Everything repeats itself. Whether it's way back in the old or back in the old like the New Testament, it's still the same. So then you guys might ask, what's so important about the presence of God in our lives? It's like, I have the presence on me. But do you really, do you really seek his presence first? Why is it important to us? I've learned that it's important because it gives our life purpose. It gives my life purpose. It's what leads me. It's what drives me. It's what motivates me, what shapes me. It's everything in our lives. It's what sets us apart. Moses didn't want to leave the place without God's presence on him. They were in the middle of a desert. Who knows where they were? 
There was probably no, like, food, no life source, no water source. But he trusted God. He says, I'm not going anywhere until you tell me to go. What about us in our lives? Do we do that? When there's something out there and we think we should go grab it, do we go get it or do we wait for God's, like, how can I say this, God's approval, God's okay? Do we wait for his presence? See, many of us have questions. <laughs> I have a lot of questions in my life. Some of the questions can be like, what's my purpose in life? What do I got to do? Some of the simple questions, the big question that I had is, what's my career going to be? What am I going to do in life? I could not figure that out, and I don't know if I still have, but that's like one of the biggest questions. What do I really want to do? Where, do, where does God want me, not where I want myself? Yeah. What about in church? Where does God want me in church? Or the other way around, where do I want to be in church? The girl's got a question, too. Who's going to be the one? Who? Such a big question. You guys have that too, don't worry. Another question, how do I get money? I got all these bills to pay. I want to be like that guy. I want to be like that guy. Look what he's doing. I want to be like that. Do we trust in God or do we go ourselves, our own path, to accomplish these inner desires of ours? Do we wait for the presence of God? Do we seek that first, or do we seek the worldly desires first? See, it can become really overwhelming at times. Really overwhelming at times. And there's this verse that just stuck out to me right when I was writing this. And it's from Matthew 6, 30, 33. And it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things will be given to you. Right. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, which in other words is seek first his presence. Seek first his face. Seek first God. But you have to seek his presence first, like I said, and you have to trust in him. You have to trust in him, the path that he leads you. When it's a Friday night and you want to go to a party, and you know there's nothing good there, and it's leading you there to go there, do you go there? Or do you go the other way where God leads you? Simple stuff like that. What else can I say? Camping. If you want to go to a camping trip and you know there's nothing good there, do you go camping anyways and just be like, ah, it's just three days. Don't worry about it. What could possibly happen in three days? Do you show faith? Do you go? Or do you go the other way? Do you go the way, the path that God wants you to go? Same thing with the job. You're broke. You got no money. You got no job. And this job pops up. But it's on Sundays. You're one day to give to God. So do you take the job? Because, you know, you're broke and you need money. Or do you go to the path that God wants you and says, just trust in me? Friends, family, same thing. Do you choose the friends that you want to choose because you think they're cool? Or do you choose the friends, and f you can't choose family, but do you choose the friends <laughs> that you want to choose? Same thing with family. Do you listen to your family? When your mom tells you to do this, when your mom tells you to do this, do you listen? Or do you do your own thing? Just slam your way through. So many things, such little things can add up. Just a little bit, I can go to that party, I can go to that camping trip. It's just a job. It's just Sundays. I'll give God Saturdays. And you sleep through the whole Saturday. When God tells you to go left, do you go left or do you go right? Which one do you choose in your life? See, Moses knew. Moses understood the principle of God. That first you have to seek his presence. No matter what circumstance you're in, first seek the presence of God without going anywhere, without making any decision. Paul knew this. Paul writes that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Your roots will grow down in God's love and keep you strong. That it will strengthen you when the spirit is in you. He knew that the presence of God, the spirit in you, is what makes you strong. What makes you stand like a strong tree. 
instead of a twig that just goes back and forth wherever the wind blows it. All the great men and women of faith in the Bible first followed the presence of God. Every single one of them that was successful, that was blessed by God, first followed the presence of God. And it could be so tough sometimes to make that decision. Am I really, seriously, going to sit home on a Friday night instead of go to that party where all them girls at? All my friends are at? <laughs> Am I really going to sit home? Am I really? That's a hard decision. Am I really going to sit home for the whole weekend while all my friends go out for the camping trip? Ooh, decisions can be hard. Some of them are simple. Some are huge. But do we trust in God? Do we go where he wants us to go, not where we want to go? It could be in everything. And there's one verse that when I was reading during the small group, it just destroyed me inside. It just twisted me in whatever you can possibly say. And it's Psalm 16, 7, 11. If you guys have your Bibles, I want everybody to open to it. Everybody. You guys can't find a pencil? Find a pencil and underline this. It's four, four sentences or four verses. Everybody. Psalm 16, 7 through 11. Psalm 16, 7 through 11. See, now I'm getting tricky. 16. 16, 7, 11. Is everybody there? No? Oh, wait, I'm not even turning there. See, I'm so worried about you guys. I mean. 16, 7 through 11. Okay, if I got there, you guys are all there. It says, I will bless the Lord who guides me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I know the Lord is always with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. It's like a rhyme. Yeah. No wonder my heart is glad and I rejoice. My body rests in safety. See, that's when you go on the path of God. Your body rests in safety. Amen. When you go on the path that God has for you. Right. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your Holy One to rot in the grave. When you go on the path that God has for you. And finally, underline this, read this if you didn't pay attention. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. You will show me the way of life, granting me the joy of your presence. See, God will show you everything that you have in your life, any questions, anything, when you just follow him, when you just let his presence consume you. See, there's only one, every single one of us was made with a talent, was made with something for us, was made for a goal in our life. When we go left instead of going where, right where God wants us to go, we might get temporary happiness, we might, we might be happy for a while, but we will never truly, honestly be satisfied there. Right. Never truly, honestly. You will just waste your life. Then you'll look back when you're like 60, 50, hopefully 17, 18, 19, and look back like, wow, just wasted my life for nothing. I just want to leave that as an encouragement. Don't waste your life. Follow first the presence of God and where he leads you, no matter how hard it is. And you'll see how God blesses you, how he guides you in the right direction, how he gives you anything and everything that you want.